it's a buffalo crossing. Sweet. I've never seen anything like this before. Mm -hmm. Look at the little buffalo. I better get out of the road, but I can't really. What do you do, just like pull over or what? Look at that one brushing his, scratching his head on the sign. Cute, huh? You better slow down, stop, let him get by. Lots of buffalo. Did we see buffalo in Yellowstone? One? Like a couple. We saw like one buffalo, maybe like that little guy right there. He's staring right at us. Come on, little dude, run across the road. He's afraid. He is afraid. There he goes. There he goes. I think we came up to a magical time at a, oh, he's just cruising. <laughs> Do you awesome. want to pull over, or do you want to keep going? Um, watch out for this guy. Oh, they have collars on them. Tracking collars, that's weird. Maybe there's people like bison, like somebody's farming them. Wow. Yeah, so this is Wind Cave National Park in South Dakota. We just got into South Dakota today, and we're greeted by cute little buffaloes. How many are there? That's crazy. Do you want to pull over? No. <laughs> You've had enough. We just spent like a week with the cows. Kind of same thing, right? No, this is much cooler, much cooler. Look at the buffalo with the bird on his back. See him? He's an old grandpa. He's got a little bird He's hanging out. He had a big neck beard. You know, that was one of the coolest things we've ever seen for wildlife. Yeah, it's pretty cool. This is an interesting spot so far. We're seven minutes from hopefully a good little BLM spot right outside of Wind Cave National Park. Here's the entrance right there. Wind Cave, there's buffaloes everywhere. That's awesome. This is a really cool area. I wasn't as excited to get into South Dakota as you were, but. I was really excited. You're right, this is good. good we're stuff. gonna see some of the most beautiful stuff. Okay, last time we drove through South Dakota, that's all we did. We drove straight through it. We didn't see On 90. And it, it's just not the same, you know, you, like you gotta settle in and I think we're gonna be amazed at the beauty of the wildlife that we're gonna see here. Yeah, we're definitely having some some good travel style here the last couple months. I like this a lot. We're seeing this is how we wanted to see the country and actually like get into it a little bit more and get out of the RV parks and it's just another way to travel and it's good to do both, really. I mean, RV parks have their benefits and BLM has their benefits or dispersed camping national forest. Mm -hmm. You know, you can get burnt out in either one, really. You can, yeah. So, it's um, it's good. We're coming up on week seven, I think, next week of boondocking our way back to Minneapolis. We're in South Dakota. We're getting close, one state away. I feel like we're close, just like the surroundings, the people. It feels very Midwestern here already. Yeah. Cattle guard. Guard. So this is Black Black Hills National Forest, and I looked on the website, the government website, and there's pretty much anywhere off the road, 100 feet off the road, and half mile from any type of structures, you can disperse camp. So here we are. Are you feeling lucky? Well, it's a forest. I think we'll be all right. I think we'll find something at least for the night to stop and. Rest what our. Say? Put the hat, hang the hat up. Hang, hang the hat, hang our head. We're gonna hang the hat hang up our head. in the Black Forest Hills National Park. So this dispersed area is not as well uh, defined and marked out as some of the other areas we've been to. We know that you can disperse camp here because we're in the National uh, Black Hills Forest, but there's. A lot of houses that were down the road, which seemed kind of weird with National Forest land. But um, we did take this little short road and there was a tent up there. So somebody's tent camping and uh, we're just at the cul-de-sac here, a little turnaround. 
in one bar of service. So that's not going to be good enough for us to work tomorrow. But 5.30, we need to have dinner, relax. 6.30. And, oh, shoot. 6.30. Wow. 6.30. Drove about five hours today. It's dinner time, relax time, get up early, and relocate for work. Yeah. So we'll have to find... Uh, well... And we, I guess a little update, I know. we uh, got off the phone with uh, Hunter from Battleborn and he's going to get us out a new uh, MPPT controller um, and replace ours under warranty. So can't say enough about the customer service of those guys. So they're going to ship that out um, to Rapid City, which is about an hour from here. Uh, but we have a good three, four days to wait that out. And then if the weekend hits, it's going to be five days. So. That's okay, though. There's lots of sites to see down here. Yeah. Lots of work to be done. Yep. We just need to drive every two days to kind of keep keep things charged up because without solar and without a generator, our batteries are not going to last um, more than a couple days. <laughs> and on that note, good night. Shut it down. <laughs>
we are a, we're like 75 percent there yeah we're no we're way blow past that no way we're gonna plug in and, and break that streak. we're not so. we're not that breakable no it's not gonna happen we really wanted to test out these battleborn batteries and see how it's working and so far everything's going really well mm -hmm. it's just uh some curveballs being thrown at us so. yeah but we're gonna continue heading north and we don't even know um we're gonna be by mount rushmore we're gonna be by the custer state park um a lot of cool stuff in south dakota you don't really think it's a, a destination spot necessarily but uh, it's it's beautiful yeah it's pretty um and to recap our our battery situation yesterday we did a good charge on it because we drove did you say that um, I'm not sure, but yeah, we drove like what four hours yesterday, so four we, or five hours. So yeah. we got it up to like seventy percent at night, which was great, yeah. roughly. We don't know for sure because our monitor is not precise right now. Yeah, once I unhook the batteries to disconnect that charge controller, it reset the monitor. So, uh, and the only way for the the battery monitor to get back accurate, you need to do like a full charge kind of cycle, which helps to be plugged in. So we have an idea of where we're at, and then we just need to make sure we stay on top of that by driving a little each day, mm -hmm. or every couple of days. Yeah, we use quite a bit of power, especially when we're we're running the laptops. So um, we just got to try to kind of keep it light on that, and um, keep driving, keep moving, and uh, we're just going to continue seeing sightseeing. Let's go. Wrinkled rock climbing area, 14 day limit, 24 foot limit also. Crazy. Yeah, what, tight curves. What a great little spot for a van. There's a whole bunch of, uh, well not a whole bunch, but like three or four people tent camping here. We can see a few tents out in the woods, but that's so cool. You can just go to a spot like this parking lot and we could stay for 14 days if we wanted to, which probably won't. We won't. <laughs> but it's, it's really cool. It looks like it'll be some fun exploring tomorrow morning. Yeah, and what, two miles from Mount Rushmore? Yeah. So that's pretty cool. I think hey, we should... we could jog to Mount Rushmore. Oh, that would be cool. We got a really good night's sleep here. There's tons of tent campers, like, nestled down in the woods, which is really cool. A lot of young people here. And it was a great stop for us to spend the night. And we just showered, so that means we have hot water in our tank. So I'm going to do some food prepping before we take off because it's cool and the days just get so hot it really sucks to do any type of food prepping when it's sweltering. So I'm going to chop up some veg, cook up some proteins, and I'm going to use my thermal cooker and make some brown rice because the brown rice is time consuming. So I'm going to get all the rice in and then it's going to be really cool because we can drive and just set the thermos on the floor and not worry about it. So we are like two miles from Mount Rushmore. After I get done doing all this stuff, we're gonna head over there. I think on a normal occasion, we would be more adventurous and we would jog there and like explore and walk back because it's so close. But because of our charging situation with our controller, we're going to actually drive because we need to get a little bit of a charge on our batteries. So that's our plan for the day. And we'll check in later once we're over there if we see some cool stuff at Rushmore. We're 
doing the free version of Mount Rushmore. Free is always the best way. Yeah. Uh, good pull off. We're cramming in here. $10 to get in and admission is free per person, but $10 per vehicle. And um, we don't think it's worth 10 bucks, but <laughs> we're, we don't. we're we certainly, don't think it's worth it. certainly gonna check it out from the road. I think that this is great. And you know what, the angle of this is exactly where you'd wanna be anyway. Yeah. Like we're square on. Unattended vehicles will be towed at owner's expense. No drones. Nice. Well, this was literally 0.8 miles from where we slept last night. And so this took up about 10 minutes of our morning. <laughs> What's next? What's next? Actually, we do need to figure out driving a little bit. It's amazing uh, without solar, how quickly your batteries go. Solar it, is a necessity. It kind of is. We estimate we use around a hundred to 200 amp hours a day and that would be like light to heavy usage 100 to 200 so really light usage not doing much we could last about four days without driving and heavy usage we could last about two days with our 400 amp hours of uh, battleborn lithium what's washington got to say about that he says yes <laughs> you are correct aaron Right on. Cool. Well, let's get out and snap a photo. The final product. That's the lock position. Unlock. It's just so easy. I love the fact that I don't have to like set a timer. I just got to put it in there and then I deal with it when I want to deal with it <laughs> on my clock. Here's the quinoa on the top layer and brown rice on the bottom layer perfectly fluffy and like piping hot you just can't beat it we're keeping it Well, we are ready to hit the road. We have been stuck in Rapid City for two days. Um, we're, we're waiting on the part uh, from Battleborn to come in the charge controller. We got that yesterday. And we kind of don't enjoy the city dwelling as much as we used to, especially in a city. This city. Yeah. Well, we spent two nights at Cabela's. That's not something we normally do. Uh, we try to just spend one night and move on, but in this particular uh, city, there was a there was a Walmart which we were not interested in staying at. Uh, there's no Cracker Barrel or anything like that. So, and this particular Cabela's was packed with RVers. Each night there was probably a dozen RVs staying there. So, the RV section was filled, and then their big parking lot on the perimeter was always filled too. It was the most packed Cabela's we've ever seen. Yeah, and we don't normally stay at Cabela's. That's something a little bit newer to us. We prefer Cracker Barrels. I don't know why, just we're used to them, um, but they're uh, sometimes far and few in between. So Cabela's is a great option also. And they have an RV dump, and they have a ton of stuff inside if you need anything there too. Do the Bass Pros have the dumps also? Uh, I don't know. I'm not sure. We'll have to check that out. Check that out. Yeah. But we are headed towards the Badlands to do kind of the final stint of our boondocking. Uh, maybe a week, week and a half um, before we head home towards Wisconsin and Minnesota. Are you excited? Um, you know, at first I was super excited to get home and visit. And now I'm not as excited. 
getting anxious? Um, well. Do you care to elaborate? <laughs> I don't know how I feel. Like, of course I'm looking forward to seeing everybody. Yeah. But it's tough to, it's tough to, this is like going home is now like comparable to vacation mode for people where we're mm -hmm. going to want to see a lot of people. We're going to want to go like eat out to eat a lot. And I'm trying to plan our social life to only happen on Fridays and Saturdays so that we can maintain that regular work week Yeah. and keep everything in check. Yeah. Kind of flip flop for us. We do better on the road by ourselves than we do when we get back home and friends and family and You're events pulled in and a lot of directions. And yeah. And you want to see everybody and... Yes, but this is the second uh, time around that we're heading back home as opposed to last year, which was our uh, first time back from becoming full time in January of 2019. Mm -hmm. And I would say it's a different, definitely a different feeling for me where I'm more excited, where um, we were just eight months into our journey and felt like we were getting a good groove of full-time RV living and then heading back home and... Just it's a little kinda... disruptive to our momentum. Yes. Last but, year. Yeah. But, but this yeah, time this... it's it's 18 months now into it. We have a much better just grasp of everything. We're just feeling more comfortable. And um, so I'm more excited to see everybody. I'm super excited. I don't know why I reacted that way. Yeah. I'm super excited. Good. And I cherish every week now. And I look forward to the weeks ahead. And... I mean, what better sign is that? So back to <laughs> boondocking. Um, it rained really hard yesterday. So this is the area that um, we're going. I can't remember the name of the one place, but the a place nearby is called the Nomad View. It's like 20 minutes from the Badlands. It's very popular. It's like up on a ridge and just I think it overlooks the Badlands uh, National Park. So I'm excited to get there. Hopefully, uh, the mud and it's like a clay. They say that area is very like uh, it can be slick or sticky or mud muddy. So hopefully that's going to be okay. Uh, we'll find out when we get there, of course. Yeah. But then I'm going to replace the charge uh, the charge controller and get our solar back because we've been without solar for like five days, and that's tough. Like, I don't know how people can full-time RV without, uh, having solar unless I guess you're plugged in all the time because, um, we basically had to kind of keep moving and driving every day to keep our batteries charged. So when our charge controller went dead, um, we were at 50% of our batteries. So if we were at full capacity, it'd be a little bit different story, but we were only at 50%. So we had 200 amp hours basically of lithium and, um, you know, we use a hundred plus a day, 150, we could use 200 amps on a, on a busy day. Mm -hmm. So that solar is so important to have that continuously charging the batteries. So as we pull into a parking lot and just sit to work, our batteries aren't draining, they're charging because the solar is doing its thing. Mm -hmm. As opposed to now we shut off the vehicle and we're just draining, especially when you start plugging in the laptops, you're draining quickly. So excited to get that back. Yeah, I'm excited about that. Good. So let's get on the road. <laughs>